After getting in love at first sight with a gorgeous lady, the young man discovers that he has the power to manipulate fire. He also gets an electric charge within his body that makes his visions reveal his affiliation with a group of sages who serve as Earth's guardians. Inquiring into the meaning of his visions, would he ever try to find the answers to his questions? Hello everyone, I'm Alex, and today we'll be talking about a science film called Brahmastra Part 1, Shiva. Hope you like it! In an ancient land in India, there lies a group of great sages whose only purpose is to meditate on the lap of the Himalayas. But then the divine light, which they call the Brahm Shakti, suddenly struck the earth, granting them powers. The one who got the fire energy is called the Yang Yastra, for water it is named Jalastra, and for wind it is known as Pawanastra. It also happens that the Brahm Shakti stimulated the sages' celestial weapons called Astras. Then, the sages' Astras obtained powers from various animals, such as Varanastra, which possesses monkey's power, and Nandiastra, which obtains the bull's ability. But there is an unexpected twist. The most powerful Astra that the Brahm Shakti has ever created takes shape to destroy the world. This weapon is considered the dangerous Astra of Brahm Shakti, for it can obliterate the earth once it flares. Due to that, the sage's purpose in obtaining the other Astras is to tame the erratic powerful weapon from taking its complete form. They spend years of sacrifice and patience training themselves with their powers and respective Astras, preparing for the Brahm Shakti's most potent weapon to appear. After waiting for years, the sages finally meet the lord of all the Astras, the Brahmastra, and kneel before it. Then, they formed a covert society known as the Brahmanch. They are formed of energy-wielding guardians sworn to protect the Astras and use their given powers for the greater good. However, history shows that the knowledge of Astras gets lost over time, making the heavenly weapons inactive. In the modern day in Mumbai, a young disc jockey, Shiva, celebrates Dusara with a ritual ceremony. He closes his eyes in prayer, but somehow receives an electric jolt that transports him to a vision in which he sees Mohan, a Brahmanch member, and a scientist analyzing the Brahmastra's piece. Mohan is in the middle of his studies when two savage men, Zor and Raftar, barge in and demand the first piece of the Brahmastra from him. They want to take it, for they will give it to their mysterious lord, Dev. However, Mohan refuses to give it to them because he is sworn to keep it safe at all costs. But since Zor and Raftar are eager to steal the Brahmastra's piece, Mohan challenges them for a fight, swiftly drips his blood into Brahmastra's box, and throws it away. In rage, Raftar aggressively punches Mohan and gets inside with Zor to follow the Brahmastra box. Meanwhile, Mohan starts blabbering to keep them preoccupied as he sneaks to the floor and retrieves his Astra from the hidden box. The next thing Zor and Raftar know, Mohan has already attached his Varanastra to his foot, allowing him to move as fast as a monkey. Mohan fights back by utilizing Varanastra to avoid capture by Zor and Raftar. Then, after dodging Zor and Raftar, Mohan returns to his flat to get the telescope from the floor and transform it into a Brahmastra box again. But when he opens it, Mohan is attacked by Zor and Raftar's master, Janun, from behind. Mohan fails to protect himself as Janun quickly puts a pendant on his neck to disable him from moving. Afterward, Janun takes off his Varanastra and takes the first piece of Brahmastra from his hands. Meanwhile, Shiva suddenly wakes up from his visions of Mohan. Shiva tries to focus on praying again, but he suddenly sees Isha Chatterjee, a London resident traveling to India to attend the Durga Puja festival. Shiva falls in love at first sight with her, and to his luck, their path keeps crossing during the festival. Because of that, Shiva takes his chance to invite her to a party he will attend. Isha accepts Shiva's invitation and follows him, only to discover that it is a children's party. She also learns that Shiva is an orphan, and it becomes his routine to celebrate every children's birthday at the orphanage he grew up in. As Shiva shares more about his life with Isha, he suddenly sees visions of fire approaching them and hears high-pitched screams. So, he flees to the apartment building's rooftop, leaving Isha in the room. Once alone, Shiva sees his vision of Mohan again, 
where he is tied up in a chair while Janoon controls his mind to find out the protector of Brahmastra's second piece. Since Mohan is in possession, he unconsciously reveals the protector, Anish Seti, who can be found in Kashi, Varanasi. As Shiva feels the electric jolt in his body, Isha suddenly touches his shoulder from behind and asks what is happening to him. But instead of giving a response, Shiva runs away from her again. Shiva then sits down on the floor and continues eyeing his vision, where Janoon is about to discover the third piece's location found at the ashram and protected by a guru. But before she even knows the guru's name, Mohan unexpectedly pushes himself off the balcony and Shiva passes out afterward. The following day, Shiva wakes up and realizes that he left Isha last night. So he returns to the orphanage and learns from the kids that Isha is at her grandfather's palace as her family prepares for Ma Kali celebration. Shiva at once flees to the palace where he sees the newspaper on the ground declaring about Mohan's death. Due to that, he searches for the news on the laptop to watch the information about Mohan. On the other hand, Isha notices Shiva is preoccupied with the news, so she orders the staff to leave them alone. Afterward, she asks Shiva what is going on and learns that he had a vision of Mohan last night and that he needs to see a niche before Janoon gets to him. Isha then favors letting her come with him, to which Shiva agrees, and they both flee to Kashi. Upon their arrival, they already see Janoon and her assassins eyeing Anish. So, Isha tells Shiva that she will distract Raftar while he covers up Anish from Zor. Once Shiva hides Anish from Zor, he informs him about Janoon and her mission of stealing the second piece of Ramastra from him. Though Shiva successfully covers up Anish from Zor, Isha fails to protect herself from Raftar, who later finds that she is involved with safeguarding Anish. Raftar uses Mohan's Varanastra to kill Isha, but Shiva quickly rescues her. Suddenly, Anish activates his Nandiastra and takes down Raftar, saving Isha and Shiva from death. Afterward, they leave the temple and escape from Janoon and Zor. They use a car and drive to Ashram to warn the Brahman Guru. But then, Janoon and Zor are too fast and manage to follow them along the way using a truck. Leaving him no choice, Anish gives the second piece to Shiva and orders him to drive without him. Anish then exits the car to fight Janoon and Zor. Using his Nandiastra, he exerts all his force to take down the truck, but Zor finds a gun beside him and shoots Anish multiple times. Meanwhile, Shiva and Isha safely reach Ashram and Shiva immediately jumps over the gate to unlock it. He uses a rock to break the gate lock when Isha suddenly admits she loves him. As they express their feelings to each other, Shiva notices Raftar behind Isha, who survives after Shiva pushes him off the mountain. Since he cannot open the gate, Shiva wraps his arms around Isha's neck to protect her from the approaching Raftar. Then, he releases his Aganyastra to burn Raftar and throws him off the mountain again. Meanwhile, the guru, Raghu, unexpectedly sees the activation of Aganyastra outside. So, he runs toward Shiva, only to see him passing out after exerting all his force to release fire. Raghu takes Shiva inside the ashram and rests his body on a bed. While waiting for him to wake up, Isha sees Shiva's body shaking and breathing rapidly, so she asks Raghu why Shiva is still unconscious. Raghu then ensures Isha that Shiva is still sleeping because the great power, the Agnyastra, is still activating within him. On the other hand, Shiva's electric shock makes him see a vision of Janoon begging Dev for more power so she can quickly get the last two pieces of the Brahmastra. Later, Shiva wakes up and finds himself in an empty room. He tries to look for someone, but then a bolt of lightning appears outside, making him walk toward the balcony. There, he watches Raghu talking to Brahmanch members outside, so Shiva goes downstairs to meet him. Meanwhile, Raghu overlooks Shiva walking toward them, for he is preoccupied with telling the Brahmanch about the murdered deaths of Mohan and Anish. He also informs them that Mohan's weapon, the Vanarastra, and Anish's Nandiastra were taken by Janoon's assassins along with the first Brahmanstra's piece. So, Raghu tells the Brahmanch to warn the other members about it and take care of themselves from the enemies. After the meeting, Raghu and the Brahmanch pray before they leave to spread the news. 
On the other hand, Isha gets interrupted from praying when she sees Shiva beside her. Feeling happy, Isha grabs Shiva's hand and takes him at Ashram's viewpoint. She hugs him tight and says she is worried when he passed out earlier. Shiva is about to respond when a group of young warriors suddenly interrupts them. They jokingly say that Ashram's viewpoint is their hangout place, not a lover's point. Because of that, Isha laughs and introduces Shiva to the young warriors. However, Shiva still looks confused about them, so Isha tells them that the young warriors are the new members of the Brahmanch. Afterward, a young warrior named Rani talks to Shiva, telling him that Ragu is waiting for him inside. Isha then comes along with Shiva to meet Ragu together. As they enter the room, Shiva gets shocked after learning from Ragu that he will be a great warrior because he is the Astra himself. He then discovers that his power to produce fire is called Aganyastra, where he can no longer use things to be his Astra for his power is already a weapon. Since that is the case, Ragu invites Shiva to join the Brahmanch and says he can be a key to burning down the evil empire with his flame. Ragu also says that Shiva's fate is to become a Brahmanch because his power has its purpose, to fight the battle for the Brahmastra. However, Shiva formally declines his invitation and is about to leave the room with Isha but stops when Ragu tells a revelation. He is surpassed when he hears from Ragu that the battle for the Brahmastra was his parents' battle, therefore he needs to finish it. Along with the revelation is Shiva's parents, who were once warriors of the Brahmanch. Due to that, Shiva changes his decision and stays at the ashram to learn more about his parents. In fact, Shiva gets realization that he is the only way to protect the remaining pieces of Brahmastra because of his inborn power, giving him more reason to be part of the Brahmanch. As Shiva accepts Ragu's offer to train him, he is told to bid goodbye to Isha, for she will pack things for him and return to ashram after a few days. Therefore, Shiva gives Isha a bare embrace before watching the helicopter lift off and take Isha away. The following day, Shiva shares his visions with Ragu, telling him that Janun and Zor are still alive. He also informs Ragu about Janun's power, the stone, and the unclear vision about her having an unknown guru. Feared of Janun's dangerous power, Shiva warns Ragu to be careful. But then, Ragu only chuckles, for he is confident that he has a new powerful weapon, which is Shiva's Aganyastra. Afterward, Ragu begins training Shiva by introducing the young warrior's Astras to let him see how they manipulate their weapons. While training, Ragu informs Shiva that for his Aganyastra to be activated, he must feel his power from within. So, Ragu orders Shiva to light a fire in a camp, but unfortunately Shiva cannot still control it. Ragu lets Shiva and the young warriors take their rest and continue their training tomorrow. Later at night, Shiva goes to sleep when his body unexpectedly gets an electric shock and his vision activates. Shiva begins shivering as he sees in his vision that Janun is already building an army. At the same time, he sees Isha packing her things and is surprisingly attacked by Zor, forcing her to tell the directions to Ashram. When Isha refuses to answer, Zor uses Anisha's Andiastra to take down the Brahmanch, who are protecting Isha using their Astras. Once the Brahmanch falls on the ground, Zor pushes Isha off the building, and Shiva eventually wakes up before seeing Isha tumble. Frightened, Shiva immediately runs toward the hangout place and calls Isha. He asks about Isha's situation, to which Ragu assures him that she is fine. Meanwhile, Ragu witnesses Shiva's Aganyastra activates and learns that Isha is Shiva's switch that makes him release his power. So Ragu talks to Shiva about what he learned and helps him realize that meeting Isha has a purpose in his life because she becomes the key that helps him fight his fear of fire. Eventually, Shiva unconsciously releases his Aganyastra in the campfire while expressing his love for Isha. Due to that, Ragu tells him that the power of love helps him control his Aganyastra Therefore, he must embrace his fear of fire. Once again, Shiva raises his hands to release the Aganyastra within him and uses his emotions in love to master controlling it. Shiva then spends days practicing his Aganyastra power. In the middle of Shiva's training, Ragu approaches him and gives Shiva a lighter, saying that it can help start a fire quickly. So, Shiva takes it and opens the lighter. 
However, Ragu notices a man running toward them and realizes he will attack Shiva. Luckily, she already catches the man before he even gets to Shiva. On the other hand, Ragu turns off the lighter for he learns that the man is looking for the ashram through the stone in his pendant glows, indicating that he is being controlled. As the lighter turns off, the man walks away and Ragu orders Shiva and the young warriors to check their perimeter to see if there are more of them. While walking, Shiva tells Ragu that the man is one of Janun's men because he sees the pendant in his vision of Janun. Ragu then realizes that the pendant has a reflection of Aganyastra and reveals Shiva's parents. Ragu cuts his hand and drips the blood on the telescope, turning it into a box where Brahmastra is inside it. Afterward, he shows Shiva and the young warriors the second piece of Brahmastra and says that Brahmastra used to be whole 30 years ago. But not until his Brahmanch mate, Dev, which is Shiva's father, gets an obsession with mastering Brahmastra since it controls all the Astras. Aside from that, Dev also wants to be called Brahm Dev, a lord who can manipulate the Astras. Technically, Dev is the only warrior who made the impossible possible because he successfully unleashed the Aganyastra, and with that, people began calling him the Lord of Fire. He attempted to activate the Brahmastra to master it, ignoring the fact that it can destroy the Earth. Ragu realizes that Dev is willing to sacrifice the whole world for the Brahmastra. However, Ragu says that Dev's mission to overpower the Brahmastra gets interrupted by Amrita, Shiva's mother. She is a Brahmanch warrior who broke Brahmanstra into three pieces, destroyed Dev's Aganyastra, and stopped Dev from his plans. After telling that, Ragu sees Shiva looking confused, so he reveals that Amrita and Dev are his parents, and the battle for the Brahmastra is their love story. In their story, Amrita is already pregnant with Shiva, yet she still does her duty to halt Dev from his obsession with Brahmastra. Since that is the case, Amrita must have survived the battle because Shiva is alive. They later found the two pieces of Brahmastra in Amrita's boat that she used to go to Dev's remote island. Unfortunately, the third piece of Brahmastra is believed to be missing and no one knows where it hides. While Shiva is still processing all the revelation, they suddenly see Aganyastra lighting all the torches in the village they are standing in. Ragu orders Shiva and the young warriors to follow him as they will track where the Aganyastra comes from. But before they move, Rani gives the pendant she found in the villager's house to Shiva. Seconds later, they are led to another village where they see Janun building an army that turns all the villagers into soldiers. She turns them to the cause of helping her to find the ashram and get the piece of Brahmastra from Ragu. Meanwhile, Shiva wears the pendant, which activates his vision and makes him see Dev's stone statue in a cave. Due to that, Dev releases his Aganyastra power, connects it to the pendant that Shiva is wearing, and takes his chance to explore Shiva's vision to find the ashram. Luckily, Cher immediately removes the pendant on Shiva's neck before it traps him in Dev's stone state. However, it is too late because Janun has already found the ashram since her power comes from Dev. Ragu and the Brahmanch warriors return to Ashram. Once inside, Shiva meets Isha again, but Ragu interrupts them and gives Shiva the last piece of Brahmastra hidden in a conch shell. But before opening it, he tells Shiva that the conch shell is Amrita's Mayastra, and only Amrita's son can reveal its true form. So, Shiva drips his blood onto it and gets the third piece of Brahmastra. Later at night, Ragu and the Brahmanch warriors prepare to move out when Janun and his army suddenly attack them. They take the Brahmanch warriors hostage and Janun steals the second piece of Brahmastra from Ragu. When Janun combine the first and second pieces together, Shiva promptly wakes up and approaches the tied up Ragu. There, he learns from Ragu that Janun has Rani and is about to torture her to get the third piece. But since it is in Isha's hands, Shiva gets it from her and says he will give it to Janun in exchange for Rani's life. However, it is only a trick because Shiva will release his Aganyastra once Janun accepts his deal to exchange Rani for the third piece. So, Ragu gives his trust to Shiva. Shiva then takes Isha with him and they walk toward Janun outside. Afterward, he shows the third piece to her and throws it in the air while Isha lights the lighter so that Shiva can release the Aganyastra quickly. As Shiva activates his power, he kills some of Janun's army. 
Shiva is almost winning, but Janun unexpectedly uses the Jalastra to release rain and soaks Shiva's Aganyastra. Due to that, Ragu and the young warriors back up Shiva and help him defeat all of Janun's army while also protecting the third piece from Janun. As they fight, Shiva kills Zor, who uses Anisha's Nandiastra to fight him off. And Tansing manages to defeat Janun using his Astra by throwing her to the cliff. However, Janun is revealed to save herself from falling. She kills Tansing and steals the third piece from Isha. Then, she takes her chance to join all the Brahmastra's pieces and sacrifices herself to activate them. As a consequence, the Brahmastra begins to destroy the earth little by little while Isha finds herself in danger. Meanwhile, Shiva refuses to run away with Ragu and saves Isha. Eventually, Shiva's love for Isha and saving her from Brahmastra's destruction gives him the strength to possess another ability, controlling the Brahmastra through his Aganyastra. After saving the world from destruction and returning the Brahmastra's pieces to whole again, Shiva has been called the Warrior of Light. The movie ends with Dev releasing himself from imprisonment upon Janun's successful activation of the Brahmastra, indicating that the Brahmastra's saga will continue in a sequel.